Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. Today we're on Åland Islands once again. The very, very beautiful Åland Islands, far out in the archipelago. It's a beautiful sunny day, and today I have another shore fishing video for you guys for pike. I did another video earlier this year for tips for pike fishing from the shore, which was highly appreciated. So I thought I'd do another one with the best tips that I saw in the comments of the last video. So once again, I'm gonna mix some fishing with some tips and tricks and together we'll see if we can uh, learn something, catch some fish and have a nice time. It's uh, the last week of my vacation. I'm here with my family. They're asleep up in the cabin up there. My wife's family has a cottage here. So while they are asleep, we're gonna see if we can catch some pike here. Now, as you can see, the conditions are not the best for pike fishing. It's completely flat water, no wind whatsoever. Very, very sunny, very, very clear water. But anyhow, we might be able to catch a fish, we might not, but Let's uh, get rigged up and start fishing. So uh, as you can see, I've stripped down the gear a lot since the last video. That time I was out for like uh, four or five hours. Today I'm only planning to be out for like one hour. So the only gear I brought is my tackle box, a hook out and my two rods. One perch rod and one pike rod. We're probably not going to catch any monsters anyhow, so there's no need to bring any unhooking mats and scales and stuff. Today our only mission is to, you know, catch a pike, have a nice time and uh, squeeze the most out of my vacation before going back to work. Like you can see here, we have very clear water and we also have lots of vegetation. So I'm gonna start with this beauty, a weedless rigged Monkey Shad 14 on the Gamakatsu Springline Worm Hook. Should be a good starting lure to see if they're biting. It's uh, late July, quite warm in the water. I think we had like 19 degrees. So I think we might need some speed. All right, so let's go directly on to the first tip of this video for pike fishing from the shore. And this one was found in the comments of the last video, brought to us by Liposchuk, something like this. And I would say this one is especially true if you're wade fishing, but it also applies to normal shore fishing like this. And that is to always, before going down into the water or close to the shore, to make a few casts, you know, close to where you plan to be standing like this because sometimes there might be pike very, very close to the shore and you don't want to spook them before you even had the chance to fish on them. Uh, I didn't really follow that tip today. <laughs> like you can see, it's very, very shallow and usually I don't catch any pike here, but perhaps that is because I always go close to the shore and spook the crap out of them. So thanks a lot for that tip. I will make sure to try to follow it better next time. I didn't do it today, but uh, that would look something like this, you know, before going all the way out there. Perhaps I should have stopped like here, something. So yeah, that's a really good one. Thanks a lot. Before entering grinding mode, let's quickly go through tip number two for this video. And that is to have a plan for how you're gonna cover the water. You know, instead of just making uh, one uh, cast, you know, randomly over here, and then you're thinking about life, having a good time. And when you have really near a cast, you're like, hmm, where should I cast next? Maybe there. And then the next cast you place over there. And then you place one over here, just, you know, completely random. I'm sure that technique will also catch some pike for you, but it's much better to have a more structured way of thinking. The way I do it most of the times is that I cover the water like a sun feather. You know, I make one cast over here, one cast over here, one cast over here, one cast over here, etc. until I've covered all the way around like this. Of course, it depends on the type of water. For example, if I don't have any vegetation or anything out here, it wouldn't make any sense to cover it as detailed as I would do with these areas, for example. So of course that also matters, but generally that's how I cover the water, like a sun feather around like this. And then when you've covered your spot, you can move to another place, cover a new sun feather, so to say, and slowly methodically work your water. The other way to do it, especially if you have like a straight shoreline, not too many points and stuff, is to just make one cast in a certain direction, fish it in, make a few steps forward, make another cast out, same angle, fish it in, take a step or two, make another cast, etc., etc. And that way you will also be able to cover it in a structured and good way. This is how most, you know, like sea trout and fly anglers do it when wade fishing the coastline and big lakes and stuff. They have all the gear in their backpacks and they're walking like this, making casts in a certain angle. So those are two very different, but both very effective ways to do it, depending on, you know, the type of water and stuff. But the main thing is to have a plan and not just randomly cast one cast over here, one cast over here. This is true for boat fishing and float tube fishing as well, to have a plan, but extra important when shore fishing because you're so limited. So yeah, now let's see if we can catch a pike here.
Right, so now I've covered this uh, stretch here, like a sun feather, and it's time to move on. Let's just keep walking this direction. Uh, let's make a few casts from here, I think. Let's uh, bring up this one, the small perch rod with a baby shark. Let's grab this very, very sunny sky. Now, when I'm using the perch rod in a pikey area like this, I'm using a pre-made darts Wolfram wire leader. So now I'm pike proof. Nope, nothing here. So I don't have much time left at all. Trying a few glass spots. The wind is picking up slightly. So hopefully we will be able to catch a pike here. Fish on, fish on! Haha! <laughs> there we go! First pike of the morning on the monkey shadow. We just raid. Ah! That was a hard take. Haha! <laughs> Look at this fish. It has some. this strange, uh, you know, cancer thing on the back. Ah! Looks nasty. Get over here. Uh, not a big pike at all, but you know, from the shore in this beautiful environment in the middle of the summer, well, then it's fun. Ah. Well, mission accomplished. First pike of the morning has been caught. Feels so good. And look at this beautiful, beautiful place. And like I said, this pike has uh, some strange wounds. Perhaps it's a uh, like cormorant or seal attack that got infected. I'm not really sure, I'm not a pro. But uh, she's he healthy, very good condition for being summer. So we're gonna unhook her and put her back. Super fun fight on this light gator rod and rhodium mega bass reel. My hook out is over there, but luckily we don't need that one. So easy to unhook with just a weedless hook. Bye bye. Hope you will heal and that we'll, we'll see each other again in the future. All right, with the first pike of the morning being caught, let's move on to tip number three. And, and this one was also found in the comments of the last video by Jan Buchar, and that is to always bring a first aid kit when fishing. You know, in the last video, I talked through the gear that I bring for pike fishing from the shore, and I, I didn't mention to bring a first aid kit, which is always a very good thing to do, not only when shore fishing, but always when fishing. Especially if you're fishing on remote places where no one can help you, you know, if you get a hook in your hand, a pike tooth or stung by an insect or a snake or whatever, you know, it's good to bring some bandage, some uh, disinfection, some painkillers and, you know, all those things that you might need. So thanks a lot, Jan. That's a very good tip number three. And as always, guys, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. So if you have any good tips about gear or anything else for, you know, shore fishing for pike, let me know in the comments and I might mention it in a future video. So now I'm going to keep hammering it a few more casts before heading back for breakfast. I'm gonna keep fishing this uh, wheelless rig monkey shad. We did the trick, I have high confidence in it. So this was so much fun. So let's uh, keep casting. As you can see, we have some weeds close to the weed line here and it drops off and stays fairly shallow for a little bit out. Fish on, fish on. No, oh, came off. Second cast after that pike. Seems like we found them. Well, it's not ready for that. <laughs> Holy shit, that was a small pike. Huh, slammed it. Well, well. I'm gonna walk a few meters, make my last cast on that point over there. And while we go there, let's uh, go through tip number four. And that's also a tip about gear and it is to bring a tackle box with a handle you know that you can hold like this instead of having to hold it as a big you know bunch like this like this vision aqua big daddy box i think that's the name has a very very good handle it's waterproof and uh, yeah makes it so much easier to bring it like this if you don't have a backpack or anything like that so yeah this is a very good tip to have a tackle box with a handle not necessarily this one but this is a good tip Vision Aqua Big Daddy Box. I will leave the link in the description below. I think this will be the scene of our last casts. 
Let's do some uh, flip-flop wade fishing here. And you know what? Let's also go through tip number five for this video. The last tip of the morning. And that is to use a slightly longer rod for shore fishing. Because that will actually give you a few extra meters of casting distance compared to a shorter rod. I must say, I, I don't carry a specific rod for shore fishing. I'm using the same rods no matter if I'm fishing from the shore or float tube or boat. But if you do a lot of shore fishing it might be good to keep in mind that you generally want to have slightly longer rods because that will help you make longer casts which can be crucial when shore fishing. This is a 7 foot 10 gator rod. I would say if you ask me this is the best all-round length of a pike rod somewhere around 8 foot. It's not too long, too clumsy too heavy you know you can still do jerkbait fishing with it quite easily like this while you can still make very long casts you can have great control with the tip you know you can move the direction of the lure like this compared to like a six foot rod or something like that if you do a lot of shore fishing you might want to go up to something like nine foot i don't think people use much longer than that but somewhere around eight nine foot is a good length when you want to cast long well, I'm afraid that this was it for today, guys. Time's up and I need to go back to have breakfast with my family. And then we're just gonna have a nice day swimming in this water. This uh, weather wasn't the best for pike fishing anyhow. It's uh, probably better for swimming in this beautiful water than it is to fish for pike. But uh, again, I had a blast. It was so much fun. At least we caught one pike. That was cool. I also missed another bite to cast after. So at least we had some action. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something or at least got some inspiration. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys in the comments. Again, you know, all your best tips for shore fishing for pike the best lures best gear best tactics anything please let me know in the comments i learned a lot from the last video so i hope to do that again and uh, last but not least i just want to show you the lure that i was using basically the whole day today it uh, was this uh, new 14 centimeter monkey shad perfect downsize pike option for me this is a safe card both the size the color the rigging it will work in all waters all conditions big fish many fish uh, the best thing with this lure is uh, both, like I said, it's a good downsized lure for pike, but also it has a very, very good price. For not even 7 euro, you will get three of these guys that you will be able to rig however you want it. The three riggings I use is uh, this one, just a traditional jig hook. I also use, like you saw here, weedless rigged, rigged on a, a Gamakatsu spring line worm hook. And last but not least, a traditional shallow rig with a you know treble hook stinger. This is a gator stinger small, which is perfect for this lure. This is my first choice when fishing in shallow water, where I don't have too much weed. Otherwise, I like to use this weedless rig. But uh, yeah, anyhow, that was it for today. Thank you so much for watching. All the gear used in this video can be found down here, as always. Also, make sure to subscribe down there. If you want to see more shore fishing videos, you can check out this one or this one. Thanks again. See you guys in the next video.